What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bronx Pinstripe Show. Happy All-Star Week to everybody. It's Monday morning, bright and early. Hope, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the Red Sox recap. We did. And today we're here to hand out some awards, mid-season awards and mid-season grades. Scott, how you feeling this morning? Good. Another series win. That's a, a positive thing that we needed badly to go into the break. Didn't uh, the little jinx? I, I know what you were doing uh, now. Now that you told me in the middle of the uh, or the beginning of yesterday's episode or today's episode, we we uh, we killed that thing, right? So we we recorded even when the the game was still going and they didn't blow it. So that's it. Congratulations. You're off the, we're off the shot. It, it would have been a very different podcast if they somehow found a way to blow that game last night in the ninth <clears throat> inning. So glad we didn't. I do feel like it was, a, it was a, a needed thing though. It's like we had to start recording to get rid of that juju from, from that stain from last sure. year uh, in Houston. For sure. All right. Well, let's start with awards. The team MVP. I think there's a clear winner, but I think there is a fun runner up here and I'm hoping that you go with the runner-up, Scott, but the MVP is clearly Aaron Judge of the team. <laughs> but do it. Do it. Give the people what they want. It's Jose Trevino. It's clearly Jose Trevino. No, it's Aaron Judge. It's Aaron Judge. Jose Trevino has been an unbelievably valuable piece to this team. Uh, it's He's been... He, Brian Cashman is the happiest person in the world when he looks at Jose Trevino. It makes him smile, uh, as well as Matt Carpenter. But... Aaron Judge is the guy. Aaron Judge, I think, has taken such a leap forward just from the eye test of, of the way he's carried himself, the way that uh, just the way that he his mannerisms in the dugout. He he looks the part of, of the leader of, of the, the the unofficial captain of the New York Yankees. And the numbers are just ridiculous. I mean, he's he's here now with with Roger Maris at at 33 talking about a 60 home run season and it's it's legitimate because the guy you can't make mistakes against him and he he comes up in moments mm -hmm. and delivers in big moments so it's 1000 percent. can Josh. also go understated that he's moved to center field pretty much full time and he's a center fielder a six seven center fielder he, unbelievable he's, when you think of however you want to consider the mvp award whether it's best player award or, or truly trying to identify value to a team he has provided immense value to the Yankees by moving to center field and, and filling that gap while leading the team in home runs and in production. It's just, it's unbelievable. I do think a serious argument can be made for Trevino as the second place finisher here. Yeah. And if I'm not going to argue with you if, if you feel that way, just for all that he's brought to the pitching staff, he leads the league in framing. And uh, as we know, that adds so much value to, to all of the pitchers. And he's provided much better offense than anyone could have imagined. But yeah, it's Judge. Did uh, did the Yankees try to get some leverage last night by drafting a six seven outfielder in the first round of the of the draft? Well, you think? Oh no! You think you think this is they're just gonna be like, see, <laughs> Judge, like, just so you know, replacement. hey, we're at the table. Just so you know, look what we just drafted. <laughs> Literally, you. All right, Cy Young. Who are you going with for Cy Young? I I, I think there's actually three guys that could win this award. All right, so if I'm looking at Cy Young for for first half of the year, um, I'm giving it to Nestor Cortez. I think Nestor Cortez deserves this award because he's got some of the best numbers on the team. He's came he he he's he's it's amazing every time he does something, you know, just by your own uh, admission of listening to Michael K. And to me, that that helps in the voting. It makes me think that he's even more valuable <laughs> in my own brain. And the fact that he's come in, and if, if Nestor Cortez wasn't doing the things that he's doing, this team would be in a very different place. I think Garrett Cole is, is, has to be a relative constant. He's got to be uh, not a piece that, that we're, we're scratching our head about. This is exactly what we expected from Garrett Cole. In fact, some people would expect even better than what we've gotten. You can't say the same thing for Nestor Cortez. Nestor Cortez has... Um, been just a, a huge crucial piece to the fact that he's gone as deep as he has into games too i think it's helped the the staff uh, as as a two three four whatever you want to call him in the rotation like that's a humongous deal for getting your bullpen and keeping it fresh i agree with you it's been Nestor. he's got the best era and era plus of all the starting pitching but i do think you could give this award to clay holmes or michael king um, because those two guys have been so elite in the bullpen especially King in the first two months of the year 
and then Holmes pretty much the entire first half. Uh, I know people like to usually give it to starting pitching, so we are giving it to a starting pitcher, but if you weren't going to give it to, to Nestor Cortez, I would actually move to one of those guys as the second and third place. You can't give it to Michael King over Holmes, though. Well, I said I said you could make an argument. It would be Holmes and then King. That would be my, my Cy Young voting order. Is I, w- I would, uh, because King came out of the gate so hot, um, he, he hasn't... I mean, he's been an effective pitcher, no doubt, but I I don't think he's uh, I don't think he's even number three. I think you would have to put Garrett Cole as number three. Pretty much through the month of point. like May, he was the most valuable relief pitcher in baseball, not just on the Yankees in baseball. Yeah. No, I get it, I get it. But when we're looking at at a short sample size, I can't look at a com- even shorter sample size and and and, uh, and just make a full judgment on that one. I got to give it to Cole at that point. He's just gotten more, hell of a lot more innings, so. That's why the start, the starting pitchers get it. All right. Rookie of the year. We're kind of adapting this to first year Yankee. <laughs> we already talked about Jose Trevino. It has to be Jose Trevino. But maybe you could make an argument for Matt Carpenter. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, anybody can make a, a Matt Carpenter argument right now is very easy to do. Uh, but no, Jose Trevino is the guy. I mean, the guy walked off the street, essentially walked off the street. Brian Cashman pulls him in two days before or a day before the season starts. The man comes in, owns the pitching staff takes steals the 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 uh, the starting catcher's job which no one knew there was competition for and 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 all of a sudden is you know an offensive uh i'm not going to say he's an offensive juggernaut he's cooled down quite a bit no doubt but he's he's a presence he's an offensive presence he's he he turns the lineup over he gives good at bats he's he's come up in clutch situations so it's 100 percent Jose Trevino, no doubt about it. If you were to make the argument for Carpenter, it would be like when when Gary Sanchez didn't win the Rookie of the Year back in 16 because he had that amazing month and Michael Fulmer won it because he had a really solid full season. So Trevino has had a really solid first half of the year. Matt Carpenter has been on out of this world for for two and a half weeks. So so that that well more than that. I mean, really, since he's stepped into the I know, building, I know. He's when been... did wait, when how long he's been on the team? I guess it's been since since like uh that tampa series in late may right like it doesn't i was gonna say early june is it early june late may early it feels like it's been a full two months but obviously now that he's been getting a lot more playing time and still producing it feels like the last two weeks have just been ridiculous comeback player of the year they have they have they have been ridiculous (laughs) doesn't just feel that way they have been ridiculous with him all right the comeback player of the year. This is Glaber. Really having an under underrated season. Pretty much what we saw before he uh, before the COVID year, his 2018 2019 seasons, which was all star level play. He he is doing that. He has done that this year. Absolutely, I think Glaber has. I don't know. I don't know if if Cam Mabin is to be the one to get all the Middle credit. Of the field approach. But, um, Middle of the field approach has been really good for Glaber Torres. This has been something that we have been talking about for for two years, it seems. For two years, because that's that's the timetable. The the guy got very pull heavy. He got very home run heavy and and happy. And I think it took him off his game. He stopped using the full uh, the full field. And when he started doing that, when he started going with the pitch and using the entire field, the ball just starts flying out the park. Like that's what happens when you when you are up there to hit line drives. You will also hit home runs as a byproduct, and I think that's how he did it in '19. You're looking at the his his approach uh, this year. It's just so much more balanced, so much more um, uh, effective because he's using the entire field and he's not looking to, you know, open his hips up so damn early and just throw the barrel on it to try to hit it down the left field uh, line anymore. He's he's going with the entire field and using uh, the entire strike zone. So kudos to him. I will say. There, there's an honorable mention here, and I, I think it's Aaron Hicks because Aaron Hicks really came out of the scrap scrapyard. Uh, we, we did not believe that he was going to be anything. We had this 10-year contract on a guy that we're like, okay, what are we doing here? He can't stay on the field. He's been he's been good. He he struggled out of the gate mightily, but or actually out of the gate he was okay, and then hit a really bad slump. Um, but has has found himself and and has, has been an effective uh, a presence at the plate, and we know what he brings on defense. And he's even, you know, shown a little bit of arm strength in the outfield. So I think Aaron Hicks is definitely an arm Well, we, we, Aaron Hicks is winning award. It's the I thought he was done, but maybe not award. Because since June 1st, listen to these numbers for Hicks. 274 batting average, 397 OBP, 
478 slugging and 875 OPS. That's fantastic production from Hicks. Well, for for yeah. now going on a month and a half. Exactly. So yeah, I could I could uh, I could swap labor into that into that piece too because there were plenty of uh, plenty of people t- uh, calling for his head. But did we think Glaber was done, or did we think Glaber was maybe just like broken? Like I feel like those are two different things, right? Like I, I like Hicks looked like he couldn't play baseball anymore. Like he was too old, his body was too broken. That the, I know they still had. I mean, he's not that old, but he's he's an old thirty three or whatever he is. Like <laughs> he's an old thirty three. Yeah, like that exists. Like his body, his body's his body's old. I don't know. Um I think that Glaber's age, purely his age, puts you in the category of like, well, maybe, maybe there's a, maybe, maybe this isn't him. This probably isn't him, purely because of his age and his pedigree. Like we knew what he was coming up as, and there's a, there's, there was the other side of this. Was like, well, if he goes away from shortstop, then maybe he could be. So it's, it's a little bit of the Gary. Sy- ah, I already I said it. it too. It's a little bit of the, of the syndrome of like. Well, the potential, the potential, the potential. It's just like, how long are you going to say that? This wasn't, this wasn't that big of a gap. So I'm not going to put it. He's certainly not in that category. It's, it's it was been a season and a, a half. weird two it years. It was a season and, and a half when you consider the COVID season for Glaber. But it sure. was a really, really it, bad season and a half. It, it was a weird season and a half also. So to, to his, you know, to his defense, it was a weird, a weird time for everybody. And he's coming out of it with a new approach, or maybe a, an old approach that's just rejuvenated. He's got a kid, you know, little little dad strength, right. little perspective. He's like a twenty four year old dad. <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter how old you are. When that kid comes, my God, does that change yeah, your world? You so age 10 it's, years. it's a different, it's a different perspective. I was worried. And I think it's I was good. worried that for Glaber, it was not going to happen again with the Yankees, and he was going to have to be a change of scenery guy, and then he was going to go on to some other team and start to perform again, and it was going to be really freaking annoying. That's what I thought we were going to deal with with Glaber. Well, we're not. We're not. He had the kid, and it, and it boosted him up like five years in, in maturity, so it worked. All right. The I Don't Belong Here award goes to Joey Gallo because anything he does in the baseball field for the Yankees, it looks like he does not belong. He does not belong on the best team in baseball. He does not belong on the Yankees. He does not belong in the dugout. He just looks confused half the time and 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 pretty much defeated the rest of the time. So I Don't Belong Here, that's Joey Gallo. Even yesterday when he hit that home run, he's walking through the line and he's just like getting pity, pity dab, pity, pity, sympathy, sympathy, high fives. And he knows it. He, <laughs> he knows it. it. His head's down. He's like, God damn it. All right, all right. Just please don't talk to me. You don't talk to me when I come into the dugout, when I strike out every time. Just do me a favor and don't talk to me when I hit a home run once you a month. You know what it's like? Okay. Because I, I don't – it's it's I can feel the condescending attitude raining down on me. And nobody wants that. So he just needs to be removed from the situation. Do you know what it's like? You're out playing golf with your buddies. And through 17 holes, your tee shots have gone in the wo- in the drink, in the woods. You've shanked it. You've sliced it. You have not hit a fairway all day. You haven't even come close. 18, you finally get up there and you pipe one. And everyone's like, yeah, good shot. Good shot. Way to go. Shut the hell up. I don't need to hear this. I know. I know what I've done. That's what it's like for Joey Gallo. See, I'm different because at that point, I'm just like yelling at myself for not doing that earlier. <laughs> I don't even allow the other person to give me any praise. Um, and I don't get paid millions of dollars to go play golf. In fact, quite the opposite. But yeah, he's a, he's a guy that, you know, I know we're going to talk about uh, the Invisible Award coming up too. I could put him in that category mm-hmm. because the man walking through that dugout, that's what he should be. He should be invisible. People should not acknowledge. We came him. up with the Invisible Man Award, which was meant to be a good season that has just flown under the radar. But you had a different yeah. perspective on it. I do. When I think about the Invisible Man, I think of it's. You could go a couple different ways here. Who's the be- Who also? Who's the best? Um, who's the best extra inning runner on second base? I could say that is the Invisible Man. I could say. Uh, the person that just who doesn't that ever be? show up. Who would that be? Who would that be? I don't know. Tyler Wade no, is going to be LeCastro. that guy soon. Tim LeCastro. Tim LeCastro. Yeah, but I don't know if he's. I don't know if the numbers prove that out. He's been out for a while. Um, might it might it might say Giancarlo Stanton? I don't know. What what are the numbers? The uh, 
is that a stat that that, that baseball is keeping what, track what do you, of? What do you even? But like, how does that? That doesn't say anything about the runner. I just want to know it. You just want to know, like, I just want to know. What I want to know runner, who scores the most. What ghost runner has scored the most? <laughs> the most. Yes. So, so who has base? This is a pivotal stat. Who's who's gotten out in the ninth inning, <laughs> the last out in the ninth inning, most often to then yeah. be put on second yeah. base and then just happens to come around and scores. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that's what that's what I want okay. to know. Um, I don't know that that stat. And uh, it's like the BABIP of of uh, of baseball. No, because BABIP is actually the, valuable. That would not be valuable. It would be. It would be. It would. Uh, it would be a percentage of conversion for that. But I, but you can't attribute that to the base runner most of the time. Yeah. I don't think you. You, Anthony Rizzo. No, but still Anthony, in third base. No, Anthony Rizzo is a good base runner. Like if if it turns out it, to uh, be. Did you just say that? If it, I've always said that. If it turns out to be Kyle Higashioka, I'm not going to say. Well, I want Higgy out there on second base every time because get Higgy out on second base. Obviously, there's something good happening. Off there. Maybe he's track. Maybe he is telling the signs to the batter. How do you know? Until I see the stats, I won't know. Oh, this. maybe. Okay. So yeah. Who's the best cheater? If Higgy's the guy, like, oh, Higgy's Higgy's actually relaying the signs, which is a very positive thing. Getting that extra base hit, you know, a lot. Of, I can go next level on this one, but um, but yeah, I saw it as the other way. I saw Invisible Man as uh, basically you don't show up. You're not there. You're no. You're not there. Your 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 name is there, but your body is not there. And that's what happens with Joey Gallo this entire year. Yeah. I, Even when he hits a home run. I don't consider I, – I basically do not consider that home run he hit on Sunday real. Like that was a, a, as nothing as a nothing home run can be. It was in the late uh, late game of a blowout. It did not, it did not yeah. matter. It meant zero. No, it, it literally meant that the pitcher hit the spot that his bat was swinging in. That's all it meant. And so we took or the rest of us took this award to mean underrated, whose whose season has just been really really good, but we don't talk about a whole hell of a lot. DJ could fall into that category. Also, Monty could fall in that category. He's had a really really solid season, higher ERA plus than Severino and Tyon. Um, we're going to talk about Tyon in a second, but but Montgomery has been perhaps uh, the uh, one of the I'm not going to say the most steady starting pitcher because obviously Nestor and Cole have been pretty damn steady. But he's certainly been far more steady than Tyon and Severino, and almost as much as those other guys. If we're going, if we're going with that category or that that interpretation of the uh, of the award, um, then I I agree. I think it's DJ Lemayhu. I think Lemayhu has has put together a very solid season. You don't hear anything about him, but this is his mo. He, he just he puts his head down. He does the work. He's healthy, which is a huge positive, which he was not last year, um, and. As of late, I mean, he's just been he's been scorching the ball and and uh, and just getting on base at a huge clip. So, DJ LeMahieu is my guy. He he's so overshadowed now by all of the storylines and all of the, the the big things happening in this team that he's just flying under the radar, man. Where he's he going to hit a big home run, or he's going to get into a yeah, exactly. He's gonna he's gonna play in every position on the on the field you put him in, and he's going to get big hits and he's going to be consistent at the top. Of he that has order, had so. big hits. He he had a hu- that huge yeah. hit against Houston. That's probably his biggest hit of the of the first half. So the next award is the Two Face Award. This has to go to Jameson Tyon. I was gonna name this the Jekyll and Hyde Award because we used to give that to Michael Pineda every season because he'd go one start where it was seven <laughs> innings of fifteen strikeouts and then one start where he couldn't get out of the second inning. But Jameson Tyon, it, 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 he doesn't go back and forth. It's just been one thing and then complete opposite for the next stretch. So through June 2nd, Jameson Tyon had a 2.3 ERA and a 2.86 FIP. Since June 2nd, he's got a 6.05 ERA and a 5.06 FIP. Yes, his last start was very good. We talked about that on Monday's episode. But damn, are those two opposite seasons? They are. And... He- it's a, it's kind of a, it is a worrisome piece for me with Jameson Tyone because you don't know what you're gonna get on a given day. Although he is streaking no, no, too, I see that. right? So I, you, I don't, I disagree. I think that, but when the, I'm talking about in the playoffs. So when I get, when I get to the end of the season, which guy is gonna show yeah. up? Because to me, it's, it's like the end of a streak, right? right. Like, when is the turn happening? You can't categorize it, right? You can't categorize it in, in the same, in the same vein. So I don't know what he would be. He would. Monty, I feel like I would have more as a fan. I would be more grounded and okay with him going into a start. Tyone, I just um um because of the home run ball, 
I'm a little bit worried for for him, and, and I'm definitely more I on edge. He gives me more anxiety. A lot of it depends on the situation. No, neither guy is going to be starting game one, two, or three of, of of the postseason. So, so well, actually, I don't know. That entirely depends on Severino's health and status going into the playoffs. And yeah. If, and if you listen to me, he's going to be the number two. If so they acquire possible. a starting pitcher at the deadline, then that could change. But so like a lot of it, I think, would depend on the situation. And if you are going up against um, maybe a pitcher that you have confidence you're going to score a lot of runs off of, you might just want to – I don't know. Like, it, But that's just not the case in the playoffs. I know it's not the case in the playoffs. I know it's not the case in the playoffs. It's like if you're facing elimination in a potential game four, right, and it's like you have to win or you go home so you can push it to game five and get it back to Cole, who are you trusting yeah. more? Like Tyone's ceiling I think is higher than Montgomery, right, because he could go out and dominate six shutout innings. But he could also give up six so could, runs so in Montgomery. three. Uh, see, Montgomery, I feel like you pretty much know it's going to be like three runs in five plus innings. Here's the problem with the scenario you just laid out. The scenario you just laid out allows for much quicker, a uh, much quicker uh, leash to be pulled. Uh, not a long leash, a short leash, a short leash in the playoffs because of the bullpen in the situation. The reason I'm I'm saying Tyone is the one that gives me more of like the 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 anxiety ridden uh, fan experience is because of the home run ball. He's susceptible to the home run ball. So the game could be two nothing, and then. It could be three to two in a blink of an eye with him, and and Montgomery's just not that way. You you got to earn it against him a bit more. You can almost see it coming a bit more. Whereas Jamison Tyone, all of a sudden you blink and and there's you know five runs on the board because of the home run ball. That's the difference. To yeah, me. yeah, and that could be super dangerous in a playoff game. All right, the award for most likely to blame an '80s rom com movie star for his struggles goes to Garrett Cole. Do you have any other suggestions for that? <laughs> I didn't really understand it. I saw this and I kind of wanted to let this play out on air because I didn't want the actual reasoning for it. But, I'm not gonna, yeah, every, if but you know, you know. I, if you don't know, then I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You haven't been listening to the show all season. I, I, I uh, it, it's funny. It's funny because it could be anything and it's a, it's a, it's a good reference. So um, yeah, Garrett Cole's the guy. Garrett Cole's the guy. And I, I, I hate this. About <laughs> I, know. I hate this about him. I, I really do. Like, the, that's the thing. I just mentioned the Tyone, the reason that gives me. Well, anything could be the thing that, that comes in and, and bothers Garrett Cole. And that sucks. That sucks. Like, I don't know. A black cat could run across. There could be, uh, you know, a, a cloud in the wrong spot. I don't know. Those There's are more legitimate excuses than someone didn't throw the first pitch on time. There's a guy... You know, I don't even consider Billy Crystal as a rom-com guy either. Oh, I gotta he tell was you, that's where my disconnect was immediately. Mm. He's just, I don't know. He just, I didn't. He was I don't, in I don't the 80s, in that, he was that rom-com. Uh, I have a hard time saying rom-com. I have a hard time saying Billy Crystal What would you call his movies? He's just a, com it's just comedy straight up. Okay. City Slickers, classic, not rom-com. Right. Anyway, I, I digress. The, uh. The um, but yeah, it could be. I mean, there could be a guy behind home plate wearing the wrong colored shirt, and that will bother him. And I'm I'm worried about that. I don't like sure. this. I don't like this one bit. He needs to tighten it up. Yeah, change his voice. That's the first step. About that. Just start talking like like <clears throat> this. All right. So the most clutch award. This one is interesting. When we started to look at the numbers. So there's two different things, or three different things, actually. You can go just purely eye test or walk offs or, or something like that, and we'll talk about that. But Fangraphs has a clutch stat, which measures how well a player performed in high leverage situations. And for context, the majority of players in the league end up with a clutch score between one and negative one, with zero being completely neutral. So positive scores mean they are more clutch, and negative scores mean they are less clutch or they choke. And by those metrics, IKF has been the most clutch Yankee by a decent margin, 1.41 clutch score. Uh, Trevino is second at 1.33, and no one else is even near one. DJ at 0.5, Giancarlo at 0.29, and, and Duhar's on here. I'm going to skip over that one. Donaldson at, uh, at 0 0.05, so basically neutral. Glaber, slightly negative. Carpenter slightly negative, which I, I don't, you know, Carpenter, a thousand clutch score. Uh, Rizzo. Yeah. He breaks the, he breaks the code. Rizzo, uh, judge all with, so, so here, here's the thing. It's like, 
Joey Gallo minus 1.2 and, and judge minus 0.69. Nice. It's like, how are those guys even close? Right? So I don't know. Do you want to go by this clutch score, which would say IKF or Trevino? There's also WPA win probability added, which captures the change in win expectancy from one plate appearance to the next in credits or debits the player based on how much their action increased the team's odds of winning. The key difference here is that it does not, um, it actually takes into account situations. Whereas a lot of other sabermetric stats consider all things the same, right? Like if you hit, they wait a home run and they wait Joey Gallo's home run yesterday the same value it's just post eighth inning or whatever it is no, no no a lot of like uh weighted on base average or 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 stuff like that yeah um or wrc plus those things will treat joey gallo's home run as the same as like a walk-off home run and i'm sorry that's that's moronic um so according to wpa judge has been the best yankee for this stat 2.7 he has added the most uh he has had the highest win probability added for the team Rizzo is second, 2.4. DJ third, 2.15. Then Giancarlo, Glaber, Trevino, Carpenter, IKF. And then you get to, to the rest of the guys. And then there's also just the walk-offs, right? Like Judge has had the three walk-offs. Glaber's had a couple. Trevino a couple. Donaldson a couple. So what are you going with for this stat? That also doesn't show the uh, the – it, it walk-offs, yes, but to put yourself in a position to walk it off. There have been multiple – IKF has been situated in, in, in those situations a, a few different times. Um, so when I go I, – I go eye test purely on this one. I am not looking at numbers because, as you just mentioned, in all of the things that you just said, they don't mean a lot. It's too, too short of a sample size. The nerds have no idea about situation or pressure or anything like that, and you have to, you have to include that. So if I'm looking at any numbers – the um, WPA is probably a closer thing to look at, but I, I would, uh, my eye test tells me DJ LeMayhew. That's, that's who really? the guy, the most clutch. That's who my eye test. Actually the numbers, the numbers, would also, like the that. numbers would support that as well, because he's got 2.15 WPA, which is third on the team. And he's got a uh, 0.51 clutch score, which is third on the team. I would put IKF up in that list too. And see, I would not put why, IKF on this list. I mean, he's had big hits. He's had very big hits, but the reason why, like in those situations, I will, I will put my money on the guy that makes more contact nine times out of 10. I will make, because that guy has the ability to get up there and, and, and make something positive happen. And that's, that's why I think we see so many of those, uh, those higher on base percentage, high, high contact guys in, uh, up in clutch situations that, that succeed. They just, they make more contact. And, and not only is it a clutch situation, uh, and a high pressure situation for the batter, but it is for everybody else on the field too. So when you when you make uh, contact, you put you you force a situation. You're you're making everybody else make a play too, and I think that's a big deal. It's also for WPA. It's also what you do negatively, right? Because a uh, so you get plus WPA. Say you lead off the seventh inning of a tie game with a base hit, right? Because you're adding you're adding a scoring opportunity for your team. You got a lead off hit. But then if that'll add, you know, some percentage points, then if you are in the ninth inning and it's a tie game and you ground into a double play, that's a crushing situation. That's going to take away points. That's going to take away more points than your hit in the seventh inning added points. So part of this is also when you do something bad, how devastating is it to your team? Is it considered when you hit the ball hard as hell? It's just unfortunately right at someone, and there's a double no, play. No, that's not for, considered. For that it's too, result. This is a that this stat is a result. That's why the numbers are. They just thing. don't. I understand that, and and that's why it's hard for me to take a a large stake in what they say because I think there are situations like that. If a guy, you know, nuts a ball in the and it's just hit right at somebody, it's unfortunate. But does that mean he's less clutch? No, not in my eyes. DJ might be the pick here. Trevino is also a really good pick. I think Judge is a good pick, despite the fact that according to this clutch score, he's got a negative number. He does have the most WPA and a, a lot of walk-offs this year. All right. So most likely to inspire an angry text message from my dad. That award goes to Garrett Cole and or Aaron Boone. Did I, have I ever told you my dad's nickname for Boone? It's Goonie. Jack Goonie. In all capital letters, he calls him Goonie. And I don't know 
actually. It's not even that I, good. Well, so I feel like we need to give. Here's your dad why a, it's good. We should, because, we should give your dad a little shit on that one. That's a little lazy to me. Well, I don't know if when he first texted it, he tried to type Booney and it he mistyped it to Gooney, and now his phone is just always auto correcting to Gooney. <laughs> Hold on, I'm, I'm I'm looking for. Oh yeah, definitely the G and the B, fat thumbs, old thumbs, definitely hit the yeah. G. So I think that's and, what. Happened. And, and I think now it's, it's good. Now it's a good nickname. <laughs> okay, so it's purely it's purely yeah, but he's calling him Booney though. I don't know. Um, I think Chapman immediately just just like gets the boil the the blood boiling in your dad too. So he's Chapman's ready. a good he's one. ready for that it. Is. Like anytime he's even called, even warming up. It gets your dad pissed off. So I think that just the thought of him coming in, that's why I put Chapman uh, towards the top but of the list. But I think my dad has now shifted towards blaming, blaming Boone for any time Chapman's in the game more than blaming Chapman himself. And so my dad is the type of fan that if, if you know, if um, – if someone lower on the list struggles, if Higgy grounds into a double play, it doesn't bother him that much because what he, he doesn't have much expectation for, 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 for that situation. But when Garrett Cole's on the mound and he stinks, he's going to freak the F out. So, yeah, and when Judge no, is absolutely. up with bases loaded and he doesn't come through, he's going to freak the F out. So he's a big expectations guy. Nothing wrong with that. I think that's very natural. I think naturally people are are led by their expectations. That's why it's important to 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 manage those expectations ahead of time so that you don't go into that roller coaster of emotions because it will drive you insane and force you to send angry texts where you say goony instead of boonie. <laughs> and then you're and then you're just goony forever because because, because, because Apple of the fat thumbs. Because of AI. All right, the Rook Neto door for always going to the mound to calm the pitcher down and pressure situations has to go to Anthony Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo's the guy now. Anthony Rizzo's the, the calming factor on that entire team. I think I, I, Anthony Rizzo has brought such a good just stability factor to this team. I really, I really think it's just when you look back at everything. I mean, even this past week during Hope Week, a lot of it was centered around his foundation, which is very admirable. I really appreciate all of the things that he's doing. You don't see that very often where a player's foundation is like the focus focus of an entire team. He's helping uh, families that are, um, you know, have, have a loved one going through cancer. He's, 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 he battled, um, he battled it when he was, I think 18 years old. Like the guy's got just an unbelievably great story he's a winner he he grounds the team and i think that that calming presence has helped out so tremendously um that's kind of why i was pushing back a little bit about the the leadership and the and the 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 gray hair presence for carpenter i think it help is helpful in a different way but i think i think anthony rizzo has really grounded this team in that way and has brought a lot of um very good things so they kind of strike yeah, me as different love... types of leaders though i agree I, I agree with that well i don't think matt carpenter's necessarily the leader, he's more of I think lead he's by just example, like example, the type of mentality he brings. He's the gritty, yeah. He's the gritty. He's the gritty guy that comes in and just been yeah. there, done that before, and everybody has respect for him immediately. Yeah, that's important. He's one of those that's guys. Important. It's important, yeah, no doubt. All right, that was Matt Holiday for me. It was the problem with Matt Holiday is he just faded way too much in in that season. Yeah, and and maybe that'll yeah. happen to Carpenter too. But but as soon as Matt Holiday was just really not performing, it's it's harder to be that leader when you. One aren't playing because you're you're not performing and you're just not performing. Well, I think a guy in that situation can be that can transition into that better than anybody because it's all again expectations. Like no one's expecting. No, first of all, no one expected anything that Mike Carpenter has done, and no, I don't think he's expecting it to continue the way it is throughout the rest of the year. Also, shout out to Matt Holiday, whose kid just got picked number one yeah. overall. Jackson Holiday is a shortstop. Uh, it's crazy how Oregon, many so. former. Like former yeah. really good major leaguers kids are now in the league or being drafted like and really really number good two players. was was uh yeah Drew Jones <laughs> Andrew Jones's kid who looks like a specimen these kids are just Drew studs. Jones I already know been... is the best center fielder in baseball defensively yeah he's a six four gazelle he's out there just just taking every every uh, stride is like four of our, somebody else. Yeah. All right, the uh, the American Idol Award. This this is a Logan special. I know this is a Logan special. This one goes to Garrett Cole because he always loves to lip sync "God Bless America" as it is being sung in the dugout, from the dugout. He does. He actually goes for it yeah. too. 
He, I don't think he's lip He's really belting I think it he out just can't in his it. Kermit voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all squeaky. You can't, you can't, I think the way that he commits to it, you can't lip sync. That's a good point. You can't, you can't commit that deeply. So Devers is sitting on the other side, right? Devers going. sitting on and listen to Squeaky over there sing Belt Out God yeah, Bless like, America. Oh, supposed to be intimidated by that? <laughs> Until he got knocked down, he's not very intimidated. Yeah. So he needs to get... See, if I'm Garrett Cole, I'm practicing at that point in the baritone. Just like going for the deep baritone on on the... Uh, and I, and I'm using I'm using the the national anthem and I'm also using the seventh inning to practice my chops. Ilya, as the uh, as the resident musician in the building, can that help your voice by by just practicing in those moments? Uh, not not too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, not no? for him. Not for him. You gotta have oh. you gotta have a foundation there. Oh, I don't think he's. He's a big guy. He's got a foundation. He could get. It's it's all about the breathing, isn't it? He's got to he's got to he's got to use his his lower torso more. <laughs> do you guys he, watch? Do you guys watch Always Sunny? You ever watch Always Sunny? <laughs> there's a, I I never got oh into it, but I've there, seen there's that. a scene where D is like teaching uh, Charlie about like singing or about like performing and projecting, and she goes, "You got to find your breath." And Charlie goes, "What do you mean? My, my breath is in my mouth." <laughs> She's like, "No, it's got to come from down deep. It's right here." It's right here. No, it's your, your lower, the lower half of your, uh, of your torso. Okay. So the next one is the Houdini award. This one goes to Michael King. Got some good stats here. King has a 15% inherited runner scored, which is fifth best in the AL actually only one ahead of clay Holmes and batters against King with the bases loaded are 0 for six with three strikeouts. He's gotten out of some really big jams. He has definitely gotten out of big jams. I think the difference between him and Holmes is he's been in the situation to get out of those jams, right? Holmes really just hasn't been in that situation all that often with his uh, with his closer role. And I think that's the problem with the role. This Chapman, uh, the guy is not used to having anybody on base. And, you know, in the seventh inning, eighth inning, a lot of times there will be runners on base. It's not as easy to get a clean inning in that situation. So Yeah, it's uh, tough when I, you have to have a fireman set aside for your closer always. <laughs> It's like, well, if Chapman's going to be the closer, that means we can't pitch King in the game because he's going to have to come into the ninth inning and get out, of, get out of a situation. So this award is valid for Michael King until there is a trade for the man himself, David Right, Robertson. right, right. The eye test versus nerd test award for who knew he was that good goes to Josh Donaldson Fielding. He is fourth in Major League Baseball as far as advanced metrics go for third base defense. Yeah, that's amazing. It, uh, so we knew what we were getting with him. He's he's a defensive. He's he's always had, you know, elite defense from third base. But he's definitely been under the radar. There's no doubt about it. He's definitely been under well, the actually, radar. Actually, I feel like we've gotten not what we thought we were getting. We have not got well offensively. Well, so we did not get. I what thought we, what we thought. My argument at the beginning of the season, when people were complaining about the Josh Donaldson acquisition, I was like, well, he's going to be about a league average defensive player at this point in his career, but he's going to be a plus offensive player. And if he's that at third base, that's a huge upgrade because Gio Urshela, we all love Gio Urshela. He just wasn't. He wasn't as good as Josh Donaldson at this point. But what Josh Donaldson has provided is not really above average offense has been pretty league average offense, but pretty damn good defense. So kind of the opposite. I think third base is one of those positions that you can definitely age much, much better at. You don't need the range as much as you, you know, you're, you're bottling things up as it comes to you. It's a, it's a definitely more of that first, that instinctual. Um, so I think you can get older at third base a lot more effectively than you can at other, other places. First base and third base are the ones. Well, certainly today. first base. Get. But third base, you still do need yeah. to be quick. Maybe you don't need – you certainly don't need the range that a middle infielder needs, but you need to you need to be a quick reactions. Yeah, and I, I, he doesn't look no. any less than – No, a, I mean, a, my eye test has told me he's been a really solid defensive player. I wouldn't have – my eye test has not said fourth best in the league. He's made some fantastic plays away from first base too, going towards the line and – and, yeah just a cannon. I mean, do you remember a couple of years back in Toronto? He couldn't even make the throw shoulder, from third base. Problems. I remember mocking him on the yeah. podcast for not being able to make the throw from third base. It was a clear mocking situation. It's like, this guy's out here. I thought he was done then. So good, good job, uh, Josh Donaldson for, for not being done then. He was, he was the type of asshole that I didn't like at that point, but now he's our guy. So it's different. All right. It's now time to give out grades. We're going to go down the list pretty quickly. 
Uh, I feel like grades are kind of like a Hall of Fame thing, and it's got to come pretty quickly, like your gut reaction, right? So, uh, Jose Trevino for you, Scott. Okay, real quick. Can we establish a scale here? Because I think that's a, mm. a, a piece of this. I oh, are probably... we grading on a curve? I don't even know what that means anymore. What does that mean? I think, well, yeah, I guess, well, grading on a curve, it, that's not the right phrase. Because grading on, don't you have to have a grading on a, to curve grade on a curve is you have to know. like if, if you were the highest score, but it was only 70, you get an A. That's, that's not, that's not grading on yeah, a curve. That's bullshit. We're grading against expectations. Okay. Right. All right. I like that. That's so, a good one. No, no, no. That's good. That's so a good So let's baseline. do this where let's alternate. Okay. So I'll ask you about the first player. And then if we kind of, if we like disagree greatly, like we can we can have a we'll conversation, argue. but otherwise we can move. Okay. Jose Trevino. A, and I'm not giving pluses, minuses, any of that bullshit. Why not? That, then then that's boring. You, okay, fine. Go. A plus. A plus. I'm giving Jose Trevino an A plus. He's the MVP of this team. He's he is he is everything that nobody thought he could be. I and it, it's, he's amazing. I'm giving Anthony Rizzo an A minus. Oh, so we're going that clean. You're just uh, you agree with Trevino. I agree with Trevino. Forward. Okay. Uh, Anthony Rizzo an A minus. Okay, I think he's a solid A. I think he's a solid A because of everything so that we talked about as well. Here's why I wouldn't give him an A is because he did have a pretty extended slump in in May, and and, and no, it was just fine. Like his overall numbers are still really good. 139 OPS plus. And for, for the first month of the, of the season, he was actually leading the team in home runs, but he did go into a, a pretty bad tailspin for a while there. Okay. But I, when I'm looking at this, I'm not looking at just offensive numbers. Sure. When I see a guy who's struggling offensively, I still see a guy who's on the other side, giving fantastic defense, helping everybody else out. And, and still that, that, that veteran leader, that that presence nothing wavers him and that's huge right. so solid a for that, me that, because slumps will all happen to everybody that's fair enough what about glaber okay glaber against expectations uh, so i'll give him a a b plus I, i'm actually bordering on a minus for him because my expectations yeah. were for him that okay he's going to be moving to second base i i hope that gets him right mentally but i wasn't too confident in that because I thought, I thought, I thought, like I said earlier, he was going to have to change scenery to be back to the player he was. But now he is the player he was before the shortstop move. 130 OPS plus for Glaber Torres. And, and he's just been really, really good. He's been really good. I, I agree. I think that um, when I look at him and i still i expected him to do better i i did i expected him to do better i expected him to when he move over to the second baseman i expected him to, to find it because he's got the talent I, there's there's no reason so uh b plus i'll, josh I'll give josh donaldson a b minus um because uh, like i just said he's done he's been fine he's been really good defensively exactly league average offensively that's not what i thought i was getting but he hasn't been bad or any or even costly to this team so b minus I'll agree with that. Um, IKF, I'm, I'm going IKF same grade. I think IKF defensively is is a guy that he still he he drives me a little nuts with the defense, honestly, because I know he's much better than than what he shows with the errors, the dumb the dumb errors. And I I truly believe the more reps he gets, the cleaner he's gonna get, just because he's not played the position uh, a whole ton. When you think about all these other guys who have played you know, middle infield their entire career. This guy has played catcher, third base, won a freaking gold glove at third base, and now he's playing short. So I think that there needs to be a level of expectation with like he's just not going to be the cleanest at all times. But my God, does he have the ability of anybody over there? He does. Um, so I think that we're going to see a better defensive IKF. And I think he's been exactly what the Yankees needed him to be offensively. So what did I say? C? Did I say C? B minus. Uh, B minus. Okay. So yeah, B minus. Almost, a, I almost go solid B. So actually, O'Neill and Cone were doing this impromptu on the broadcast late yesterday, and I think O'Neill said the same thing you did, where IKF has been exactly what the Yankees thought they were getting. Um, I think that's largely true. Two seventy one batting average, eighty seven OPS plus. I, I think that's largely true. So if you get exactly offensively what you thought you were getting, and defensively, do you think he's been exactly what? they thought they were getting 
they've shirt up the defense. If you look at the defensive, if you look at the defensive numbers at shortstop for the New York oh, Yankees from last year to this year, th- they're certainly improved. But that that's not a do you that's have not to, a question. Like obviously, they were awful defensively okay. shortstop last year. So did they solidify the position? Yes, I think they solidified the position. I think that people that are that are calling for a AAA shortstop to come up, no matter what the prospect level, is an asinine move and crazy to think that a a, a rookie guy is going to come up, even if his numbers defensively are better and ha- and show any value compared to what IKF has done. IKF is a professional hitter. He's a major leaguer. This guy is um, he solidified the position. There's no doubt about it. Yes, he's made some errors that have been. A, head scratching at times he's also made some fantastic plays so yeah but that, those are the highs I, I and the it, lows right so i, I yeah. they've certainly shored up the position because it literally anything could have shored up the position over last year but i don't think he has been as good defensively as they thought they were getting so because of that i cannot give him any higher than a b minus i'd say c plus b minus for ikf um ikf is also fourth on the hit on the team in hits i know so I mean that can't that is exactly what the team needed. They needed a guy oh, to make fine. contact B-minus. to get on base, solid to set B-minus. up everybody else. An eighty-two average, <laughs> an eighty-two average. Joey Gallo, I don't even know how I grade this. F minus is not strong enough. We need to come up with a worse letter grade. He gets kicked out There's of no school. There's no such thing as an F minus. Zero point zero GPA. Get out yeah. of get leave. You're expelled. You're 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 off campus. Bye, Joey Gallo. So he deserves an F. He doesn't deserve. When I was a freshman in college, I got wrapped up in the college scene. He's not, not a freshman lie. in college. And I'm just telling you, I'm giving you a story. Can I tell my story, please? The story is, is that I, English, English, uh, I forget what it was, 101, whatever the English was. I had a B in the, in the class, but I absence out of it. I absence out of the damn class and they gave me an F. And I was like, I didn't deserve that F. I had a B in the class. I literally had a B in the class and I showed up half the time as everybody else. In fact, you should increase my grade and I'm paying for it. This is ridiculous. He deserves the F, every bit of the F. So I, I can't like look at anything else besides this guy has failed at his job <laughs> and his job is to be a good baseball player. You could even be a below average baseball player and not get an F. And he has failed at being a below average baseball player. He's bad. Get him off the team. I don't want to look at him anymore. I don't want to grade him. I don't want to. Did you know that Gallo in Italian means rooster? <laughs> when you look at his hair and, it, and he takes his hat off, that's what he, he looks does. like. He looks like a rooster. He so I don't know if he like plays into that or what. But that's what it means. I, I can't. I actually can't believe he's hitting as high as 164. Like, I, I thought he'd be sniffing 100 by now. So 164 is pretty good for what he's early been. Early season success. I guess. <laughs> Aaron Hicks, what are you going with? I'm giving him something similar to Glaber, I guess. Um, uh, B minus B. Expectations, a B, a B. I'm giving, I'm giving well, him. We a gave B, but he should be a B, B minus because his expectations should be higher. And and I feel like his play has lowered my expectations for him, which I don't think is fair in the grading sense. So I still believe he should be at this. He should be this. There's no reason why he shouldn't be this. So it's a B minus. Yeah, well, the thing is, through the first half of the first half, he was an F along with Joey Gallo. And through the second half of the first half, he's been an A because he's been really good, as we said, at 875 OPS. So I guess that average would be a C, but no, I can't give him a C. He's definitely been a B. Judge, A plus, 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 plus. Keep going. Giancarlo Stan going is uh that's an A. Oh, it was yours. Sorry. You you go. Yeah, I give him a solid. He's a solid A. He's he's a solid he's a solid A. The outfield. You, you look at it, he's playing the outfield. He's doing everything that they want want him to do. Um he's an A. He's 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 a baller. He 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 strikes the fear in God in people uh and and if you look at the clutch numbers, if you believe anything, a convenient argument, he's clutch. I will go with a B plus for DJ LeMahieu. A B plus is the perfect grade for someone who shows up every day. You're always happy with the performance, but you're never thinking about it later in the day. You're never going home thinking about it. It's just, it's just really good. What's his war? 3.5. What's judge's war? 4.4. DJ LeMahieu is a solid A. And just because you're not thinking of him doesn't mean he's not an A. 
just because you're not thinking, I think the, the fact that people don't think of him is, is the reason why they lower that grade because they're not like, oh, wow, wow, DJ, wow. But he's been that guy the entire time. He, he plays every position out there that they ask him to do at a gold glove level. Like he's, he's that valuable to this team. You could make an argument that DJ LeMahieu is the glue of what this team is because of, of his flexibility and the fact that he shows up every day. And he's definitely rounding more into form of what we saw a couple well, years ago. What back do you think his ceiling that, is? That do injury. you think his ceiling is 1920? Or do you think his ceiling is less than that? Because if you think his ceiling um, is less than that, then I agree with you, A. But if you still think he could be the player we saw in 19 and 20 this year, then you can't give him an A because he's got a lot of room to grow. Because he's been good, but I, he hasn't been that. Well, I think if you look back at those numbers too, you saw that's when you saw the DJ LeMahieu type player putting up much more gaudy numbers because of also a little bit of the, the situation with the ball okay, too. Okay, so then we I don't believe he can helped. get back to that quite that level of performance. If we're talking about the level of production as far as the yes. numbers and the the, we're the, talking about. The, the ceiling for the actual numbers to be that high, no, I don't okay. think he's going to be that. So high. then, then yeah, but I think he's. He's he's a 300. He's he's a we're looking at batting average if you care. He's a 300 guy. He's going to get a ton of hits. He's going to play damn good defense. It's an A. He's a solid A. He's hitting 279. He's, like, he's everybody. Okay, I'm going to come up with a spur of the moment uh, award here. The guy that you would uh, most most likely most like to date your daughter. <laughs> DJ LeMahieu. I don't I don't it's DJ LeMahieu. I, I don't have a daughter, but I don't think I can Well, just I don't answer think the question. I can answer the question. Answer the question. I don't think it's DJ LeMahieu. It is DJ LeMahieu. He's so he's respectful. He 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 he's 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 uh he's got a solid foundation. He's gonna he's gonna provide a good. He's you know he's gonna be kind and do all the things. He opens doors probably. Uh, I'll pick Joey Gallo so I can just berate him and make fun of him, and I can oh be the dominant force. Over Could you him. imagine Joey Gallo being <laughs> showing, up, showing up with rooster hair? Showing up to rooster hair. Today. Okay, most likely to date your sister. How about that? It's better. You can you can you can do that. Joey Gallo is coming to the Rhode Island. <clears throat> That's true. With you and your dad. Imagine Joey Gallo in the same room as your dad. <laughs> uh yeah. Well, my sister's friends with Michael King, so they're not dating. But well, that'd be weird then in real life. You just got you just made it weird. <laughs> you just made this question weird. Um, man. Kyle Agashioka, <laughs> is this my call or your call? Your call. Go ahead. Uh, C minus. Okay. It's a, he's a C. He's not a C minus because I'm looking at the other side of it too. And he's done – the catching situation, the catching position is an A to me because it's – I don't care about offense with the catching, the catching position. I've been very clear about that. I just need stability. And he's helped the stability. And you know what he is? He's a backup catcher. <laughs> and he's playing that <laughs> role what, again. He is what we thought he was. Marwin Gonzalez. A B. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Matt Carpenter. A plus, plus, plus. He's the same. Give him grade one as Aaron plus Judge less is. than Judge, please. <laughs> one plus less than Judge. All right, we got to fire through the rest of these fairly quickly. Garrett Cole, I am going with a B. A B. He does not deserve an A. He, he does not deserve an A. He, he can be more. And my expectations are, are sky high. Nestor Cortez. A plus. A plus. I agree. Severino, uh, this is this is a little bit of a tough one for me, and I'm not holding the injury against him because you know that's that's not fair. However, I think you got to go probably B plus for Severino. It's it hasn't been an A. Uh, he's been he's been effective, but at the same time, um, oh yeah, I just I can't go A. I agree. I. I, I it's a solid B plus. I, th I think it's exactly what it is. It's a B plus. Jameson Tyone. You answer. Jameson Tyone, I'm up. Jameson Tyone is is a. Uh, it's hard for me to give anybody on this pitching staff lower than a B. So, I'm giving him a B. Yeah. It's just he had that really long stretch of struggle. So they, otherwise he would be much higher. But I was flirting with B minus. No, I'm, it's not I'm, B I'm minus. It hasn't been B minus. And Jordan Montgomery, I'm actually going to give an A minus. Okay, Montgomery. Yeah, uh, I, I think B plus A minus is 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 right there. Pitching staff as a whole is an A. Uh, let's do a couple of the bullpen arms. Clay Holmes. What do you got? He's an A, solid A. No plus. He's fine. A plus. Would, would it have been an A plus if he didn't have that meltdown against the Reds? It 
my uh, no, no, he's an A plus. He's an A plus. I can't, yeah, I can't let that plus. enter into my brain. Uh, Michael King, I, I would also have to give an A plus. I'll give him an A. I don't think it's an A plus. It's an A. Wandy. Talk about invisible man. Wandy's Wandy's that guy. He's like, really good. I feel like we haven't talked about him at, at all this year, and he's been, you know, he's been solid. So uh, I'm giving I'm giving I'm giving Wandy a, an A. And he almost pulled a Houdini act of his own quietly, getting out of uh, the situation last week with the bases loaded. It was you know very he did his job. The rest of the team didn't do their job. When you look at his numbers, situation. they're. They're crazy. Juan Peralta has 35 and two-thirds innings to a 2.27 ERA and a 169 ERA, ERA plus. He's been really freaking good. You can't give him anything lower than an A, maybe even an A plus. Litke has had some struggles. He's all his numbers look good. 3.09 ERA, 124 ERA plus, 2.55 FIP. But for Litke, I, I also kind of grade this on when the guy comes into the game my overall confidence level. So I'll give Licky a B plus. He's a B for me. I, flirting with a B minus. Cause I think that again, I can't give minuses to anybody in the staff. If you're grading on a curve, it's, it's, it's like that, but he's a B. I don't trust him though. Have we, if I'm being honest. Yeah, that's the thing. His numbers look good, but I don't fully trust him. Or Chapman. I feel like we can grade him. D. <laughs> I'm not going to give him a solid F because he's been hurt. I'll give him a yeah. D. D's, a D stinks. D. D, you get the degree, but you're not going to brag about yeah. it. Yeah, you're like, yeah, you're gone at the end of the year. Like, we're going to give you a passing grade because you need the credits, yeah. but get the hell out. You're not getting a job. You deserve you deserve an F. I'm giving you're you. You're not a getting D. a job telling people about your GPA. Yeah, this is like this is one of those life lessons, kid. Look, you you deserve the F, but I know I know that you've tried a little bit, and I'm not going to hold you back. So here are the credits. Here's a D. Think about it. Get better. So there's other guys in here we could maybe give grades to. Clark Schmidt has contributed uh, a good amount. J.P. Sears has contributed. Marinaccio has contributed. Uh, I mean, all of those guys have been have been solid contributors. They're all you know between B plus and A minus. Like they've all they've there's all really nobody been in solid. the pitching staff that gets less than a B. Yeah, unless you're Aroldis Chapman. He's the he's the lone guy. He's the guy. Like, he's been such an outlier when you look at everybody. It's else. hard to grade someone who who's you know had limited limited playing time. But all right, I agree. Those are the grades overall. Obviously, it's been an A first half, um, and hopefully the second half is the same. Anything else you want to touch on? It's an A plus first half. I mean, this is a, this is an all time first half for this team. I know that they've they've faltered a bit getting into the the um, the All Star break here, but. A, ab solid A. If they can if they can weather the storm of a few bad weeks then and 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 continue what they've been doing. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, this break to see how they can get it and then also with Cashman the trade deadline looming. It's about to get a lot of fun. It's about to be very fun this team. All right, thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back again with a new episode previewing that doubleheader versus the Astros.